grudge, that one little wound, that one little portion started to grow and grow and grow until all of a sudden he had a whole bank worth of things that he had not forgiven his wife for. And he sat back and that bitterness saturated his life to where when, when holidays came around, they prayed he stayed for a short time. He got married again. The problem is, is the bitterness never left because he was in the next marriage. And even in that marriage, that person still whines and complains and moans and groans. Why? Because it has nothing to do with the spouse. It has to do with his heart. It has to do with he never forgave, and therefore it grew. And now this root is feeding the tree. What comes up the root is what nutrients the tree will taste like. And if there's bitterness in the root, then I don't care how nice the tree looks. I don't care how much fruit it might seem to produce. I'm here to tell you, if the root is bringing forth bitterness, then the tree will taste bitter. God is just trying to tell his body. He's trying to teach his church. Don't go there. Don't allow a root of bitterness. Don't allow this sin. I'm not sure if you heard what I just said. Now, there's one thing for sure about that pie. Is what? What's the name of that, Brother Dan? What, what's the name of that stuff you put in there? Bitrix. It is the most bitter sus- substance on the planet. Amen to that. We got an amen. Second, third row. It is the most bitter substance on this planet, Bitrix. And the amazing part is you can drink water, but it's not going to take the taste away. You can chew chew gum, but it's only going to cover it for just a little bit. My brother was saying up to two hours you could still taste the bitterness in your mouth. Just to encourage all those who partook this evening. But here's the truth. A person who's actually bitter, it's far longer than two hours. And when people get around you, they taste you for far longer than two hours. And when you leave, they're still tasting you for many more hours, saying, oh, Jesus, don't make me go there again. Bitterness is very powerful. And if you're dealing with bitterness right now, if you have a situation where you've been wounded and you're having a difficult time forgiving that individual, I'm here to tell you, do it for yourself. Do it for Christ. Why? Because Jesus does not want you in the bondage of bitterness. He has a great plan for your life, but if you're bitter, no one's ever going to want what you got. Bitterness comes for so many different reasons. We know all the different kinds of wounds that can be ushered. We know the cycle of love. Every time you love, you become vulnerable, and every time you become vulnerable, it's inevitable. You will be hurt, and every time you get hurt, you must forgive. But that bitter person chooses not to forgive that they might be able to actually hide it in a pie. They might be able to hide it. But the fact is, is that when someone tastes it, the truth is always there. And folks, Christ does not want you to walk around like that. He has a great plan for your life. But if you're bitter, he can't use you. Because nobody wants what you have. And not only that, you're going to have a hard time with yourself. Why is it going to be hard for you? Because bitterness starts turning on yourself. It is actually a self-consuming process. To where you begin to hate yourself, you begin to hate everything you're doing, begin to hate everything that you're doing.
that you have become. You begin, you begin, you begin to hate yourself and become embittered even with who you are. Folks, I'm here to tell you Jesus wants you free from bitterness. It is never God's plan for you to be bitter. That means you've got to learn how to forgive or you're going to grow into a person that is not beautiful, but a person that is ugly to the taste. I want to challenge you tonight. This is God's plan for your life. Open your Bible with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. I'm almost done. The fact is, is you are going to get hurt. Turn to someone and say, I, I, I might hurt you. When a person can no longer get hurt, it means they no longer love because they no longer become vulnerable which means they will grow into a bitterness because after a while they'll stop loving themselves. Ephesians chapter 4 declares this, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil. Here's a fact, and that's this. You're going to get ticked off someday. Jeremy Palco, not too far away. Your wife is going to irritate you. Already has. Glory to God. <laughs> but the Bible declares it's okay to be angry. It's not a sin to be angry. But what happens is when that sin is taken to the next level, and that means that you are offended to the place that you become wounded inside, and you do not take the position of learning how to forgive, then what will happen is you have now entered into a life of sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Let me say that again. Unforgiveness is sin. Now let me say it one more time. Unforgiveness is a sin. Well, at least I'm not as a bad of a sinner as that murderer over there. At least I'm not as bad as that, that person over there. You know who they are. All right, come on now. I'm not that bad. Listen, sin is sin is sin is sin. Sin separates you from God. So what happens is when a person gets angry and enters into sin, well, how do they enter into sin? They don't forgive. Well, why is that such a sin? Because the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Why is that? Because when you're allowing that unforgiveness to seat in your heart, it sprouts roots. And all of a sudden, you start holding something against somebody. And then it starts to grow. And then it starts to encompass you. And then it starts to entangle your heart. Until all of a sudden, your heart stops beating because it's gotten so hard with everybody around you. The Bible says don't give the devil a place. Unforgiveness gives the devil a place to work in your life. And I'm here to tell you tonight, Jesus doesn't want the devil to work in your life. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. It says that in 1 John, God wants you free. Don't you dare let the devil have that place in your life. Don't you dare allow yourself. Don't allow yourself to choose unforgiveness. You heard that word, choose? Every one of us choose whether we're going to forgive somebody or not. I want to remind you, just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean you got to like them. It doesn't mean you got to be their best friend. But you have got to set yourself free from the animosity that is driving hatred in your heart and wrath and malice to where you are being captivated and motivated by that person in your life that you're having a problem with. I'm here to tell you, when you and I allow that individual to get deep-seated in our heart because of unforgiveness rooted into bitterness, I'm here to tell you that you are at that moment, you are owned by that person. You and I are only supposed to be owned by one. And that's Jesus. And you'll find no greater taskmaster than a life of bitterness.